What's up? This is Nick back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about a lens from TT Artisan, the 27 millimeter f2.8 for the Fuji X mount. This guy right here. Boop, boop, boop. This is the pancake lens. This is the actual size without the lens cap. As you can see, it's pretty skinny. And also this is just a UV filter. So it's even skinnier. Well, before we talk about it, be sure to hit that like button down below because this is like my third time recording it. It's a lot of effort. I forgot to turn the audio on and I don't want y'all to have crappy audio and subscribe for more videos. If this lens is in my hand, this was the only lens that I had for my Fujifilm X-Pro3, then there's, there's, let's just say there's something else on that camera right now you're gonna wanna check out when I make that video pretty soon. And uh, yeah, anyway, let's talk about the lens. There were a couple of contributing factors when it came to purchasing this lens with my X-Pro3. This is the first lens I had for the X-Pro3 and I've been using it pretty extensively for about a month and a half, two months now somewhere around there. And I will say that for the price, which right now you can get this on Amazon for I believe $169. I'll double check, but there will be a link down below in the description. It is an affiliate link. So this, I will get a small commission if you use that link to purchase the item, which will be greatly appreciated because I want to keep doing stuff on the channel for you guys. Anyway, uh, this is a really, really cheap lens. Like, there's no way, like, no way around. And for that price, physically you're getting a very, very small package, but it is made out of metal. Now, like, the finish doesn't feel like amazing. It feels like a, like, it definitely feels like cheap metal, but it is metal. Uh, the aperture ring is clicky and it's, I don't know if you could hear it. Nice and clicky. And the focus ring is really smooth. I mean, you take my word for it. The focus ring is really smooth, but firm. Uh, I never accidentally like changed the aperture or anything. It's pretty, once you put it in place, it's, it's there until you change it. And they have these two little, I don't know how well you can see it, two little notches on here. So you can more easily grip this tiny lens to change the aperture. It's good, it's really good, I like it. For the price, it's good. And I think this might be the least expensive autofocus lens available for a uh, Fuji X mount. Uh, if I'm wrong, I mean, correct me down below. You probably were going to anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And super small, uh, metal and really inexpensive. Those are the pros here. The cons, obviously number one is that it's a maximum aperture is F 2.8. And that's, not really, boop. That's not really the best, to be quite honest. My screen's turning blue over here, my bad. But we're gonna leave it in. Anyway, um, yeah, F2.8 is pretty, pretty not the best. <laughs> uh, if you're doing like street photography or you're, uh, you wanna get more of the environment, in focus in your photos, in your portraits or whatnot, then yeah, this works great if you're in the ideal conditions, like really great lighting, um, your subject is right in front of you. <laughs> uh, any kind of adversity, this lens is gonna struggle. Uh, any kind of low light situation, which I mean, being an f2.8 lens, it's that alone is telling you you should probably not be putting yourself in low light situations with this. 
Also, uh, this does struggle in certain situations. Like personally, I like to do like backlit portraits sometimes, some like moodier stuff. And this lens really had a lot of trouble focusing on anything in a shadow or anything. Like even if I could see it on my screen, it or in my viewfinder you couldn't get it to focus sometimes unless the conditions were perfect um i never tried the auto the manual focus on here but i don't know that probably would have helped me in those situations a little bit more also probably the biggest thing that i had an issue with with this lens was sometimes randomly it would front focus and sometimes randomly it would back focus sorry i was trying to push through the burp again we're leaving this all in we keep it real with you guys anyway yeah and um that's unfortunate um <laughs> because sometimes it like will back focus or front focus like slightly and you don't notice it until you pull the photos up on your big screen to edit and then you notice your subject is not in focus but it looks fine on the screen but it's not <laughs> and that's unfortunate so uh for something like this uh, this lens, I absolutely would not recommend you use this in any kind of professional situation whatsoever. You, you will regret it. <laughs> I guarantee it. Uh, other than that, there is one big major thing that I cannot stand about this lens. So this little lens cap slash dock here is for updating the firmware on the lens. When I was having some of those issues with the, the, the focusing, I was like, oh, I bet they have a firmware update that probably addresses some of these things. And they do. However, this is the real kicker here. You cannot update this lens unless you do it on a PC. What? You can only update this lens through PC. You cannot do it on a Mac. And what do most of us photographers and videographers use? That's right, Macs. <laughs> I cannot update this lens to the latest firmware because I have a Mac. <laughs> like what? This is probably the craziest thing ever. So I can't give a fully accurate like opinion on the lens because I literally cannot update it. You go to the website and it tells you, you can only update this with a PC. So I'm technically not using the best version of this lens right now. Um, it'd be nice if you guys change that. Hopefully you do because uh, there's gonna be a lot of people that probably find this out the hard way and uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, but overall, with this lens, was I satisfied with um, the images I was getting? Yeah, the images look good. I'll show, I've been showing a cup, couple few throughout this video, popping them up on the screen. Also, I'll throw some at the end. Also, uh, one of the shoots that I use this lens on i'll pop a couple photos up on this screen but i also want to announce that i started a patreon page yes we'll talk about that more at the end but anyway do i recommend this lens um for the price um it's the you know that 20 27 millimeter on a crop sensor is what like between 40 and 50 millimeters it's like your standard like portrait 
it, it's a standard length lens. You like, you know what I'm trying to say here? I'm struggling right now. My brain is dying. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think you, if you're not using this for professional work, if it's for fun, you have like a inexpensive Fuji camera and you just want an autofocus lens that you can go out and create some like street photography with or some nature photography or whatever. Yeah, get it. It's super cheap. What do you have to lose? Um, for professional work, absolutely not. Do not do it. <laughs> um, I would take if you like are a professional and you're like, I, this is like a really inexpensive lens and I'm trying to find something also inexpensive. I would recommend you just get a manual focus lens. Uh, yeah, there are a ton of manual focusing lenses that are probably gonna do you better. Like, and if you don't hit focus with those, you're, <laughs> it's your own fault <laughs> and uh, not the fault of the lens. So yeah, do that. But like I said, if you just like a casual person, you want something for street, for nature, whatever, whatever. Yeah, get it, it's cheap. Uh, anyway, circling back, I have launched a Patreon. Um, basically, so I am a boudoir photographer. I do boudoir, I do some art photography. And obviously I can't put a lot of that stuff here on YouTube. So instead I decided to make a Patreon page and if you support me on Patreon, you'll get access to galleries and behind the scenes that I just cannot post here. And I already have a post up. I'll be making another post with the behind the scenes from a shoot that I use this lens on. And it was a boudoir shoot. And you'll be able to see that behind the scenes on that page along with the gallery. Uh, you know, just support me and I'll be able to continue to keep creating things for you guys and giving you guys information that you need. And I appreciate everybody who tunes in and likes the video and subscribes. And I hope to see you next time. I got a good one coming up.